Hey there, greetings everyone and welcome back to another episode of Plan B Success. We have Andrew Dupy with us today and Andrew is from Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama. He's been the chief sales officer for Leaders Press, a company that's into publication. And we're going to hear from him his story and what publication is all about for a lot of the writers out there. So Andrew, welcome to the show. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. So tell us a little bit uh, in your own words uh, about yourself. Uh, yeah, I am someone that exactly what you're talking about that had to do a plan B <laughs> on a career. Uh, I was a career educator, actually, uh, for most of my life. I, I actually even went as far as administration and really just almost randomly by happenstance, uh, I fell into an opportunity to get into a startup business, a startup business that was in a fascinating field that I had at least some understanding of and knowledge of that uh, it, I thought had enormous potential. And that is hybrid publishing, which is the, the mix of traditional and, and self-publishing, you know, but facing CEOs, entrepreneurs, and helping them get books to plug into the business. I thought it was just a interesting idea. I knew that there were other businesses out there and, and getting in on the ground floor was a risk, <laughs> but it was a risk I took. And it was a good risk because we've been very successful uh, since we founded this company. Awesome. So let's talk about your earlier career. You said you were into education. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. What was your early career like? Uh, yeah, I was a history educator. I, I taught history in high school and middle school uh, at various points in time. Um, I love history. I still do. <laughs> I love teaching. Uh, I, I thought that that was uh, something that I could get into and stay into. But uh, anyone that's familiar with the American school system understands that it faces enormous challenges. And it faces enormous bureaucratic challenges. And it faces enormous societal challenges. Uh, and, and being a teacher is not exactly what I expected to be. I, you know, when I was in college and going through it, I, I thought that, you know, it would be what I got in college, I was standing up in, in, in the lecture and all of that and doing, building your lesson plans and, and, and teaching in that way. I wasn't taught that way in high school, but I thought, well, I'm going to be a high school teacher and I'm going to change things the way that I think it should be. And then getting in there, you realize that you don't really have that option. <laughs> um, you're, you're, you're put into a pigeonhole. And you know, I went into administration as well uh, and, I, and private school. And when I was in administration, I thought, well, I can change things from the top. And well, now being in administration just means you're the bad guy. <laughs> and you're and doing nothing but discipline. So it became a career that I didn't get a lot of satisfaction out of. Um, it, I, I did get some very practical world skills that I was able to then use in my next step, which is the career I'm in now. Uh, which were very valuable. But yeah, it just was a growing sense of dissatisfaction that led me to you know, abandon something that was relatively stable and take a shot <laughs> at something that at first was, uh, well, are we going to make it or not? <laughs> and we did. Awesome. So how did that come, come about? Uh, you know, how did uh, you stumble into publishing? Uh, it, I, I, it would, came completely from my ex-wife, <laughs> um, it, it, which I have great respect for and love for. So, you know, amicable on the ex part. But uh, you know, we, uh, she was starting to move into the world, but well before the pandemic of uh, virtual assistance and, and getting out and becoming uh, someone that was working from home because she also had done an office job for a long time and didn't want to stay in it. And so that's how we actually met our CEO, Alenka, was that she began to work for her as a virtual assistant. And when she explained to me this business she was working for, she didn't really understand it at first, but when she began to talk about it, I saw the potential in it uh, right away. And I said, well, you know, it's a shame that she doesn't need a salesperson because you know, I grew up, my dad was a salesman. You know, I did a lot of sales when I worked for a private school. When I was going through college, that was the the big dog salesman that my hit my night job uh, at Circuit City, <laughs> and uh, it's like I, I can sell stuff really well. So same she didn't because this sounds like a, an interesting product to go into, and so she just brought it up to a link. It's like being a salesman. The link was like, I'd love to have a salesman, <laughs> and then there it went. It was just it was a couple of phone calls after that, and uh, it put me in to the deep water and started selling books. So tell us a little bit about Leaders Press. You know what what all yep. do you do today and uh, what are your offerings? 
Uh, what we do is we provide a solution for the CEO, the entrepreneur, uh, primarily people that may be in the coaching space, uh, customer facing space, really, that wants to have a book to plug into their business. So they, they need something to tell a potential client or uh, a potential partner everything about themselves that they can't do in, in an hour in a boardroom. Um, and so that it, they come to us without a book without the time to write one, without the, the knowledge sometimes to, to do it, uh, knowing that they have the stuff in their head and we help it get it out. Uh, we provide a service in which we do ghostwriting, we do full editing, uh, we have a distribution partnership with Simon & Schuster. The most important thing is we provide a lot of marketing. We actually have offers that can market a book to the USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestseller lists. And we have a 100% success rate on that. Um, so we have become something very convenient for an entrepreneur that needs a book and doesn't have one to come and actually have a turnkey solution where they get the whole thing, all of it done uh, in, a, in a 10 month process, which is significantly shorter than if you're doing it yourself or trying to go the traditional publishing route. Uh, and that's why I saw the value in it because it also, we provide solutions as well for someone who just wants to tell their story. Uh, so there's a lot of other uh, opportunities that you have if you're a CEO and say you're doing your exit and you've been in business for 30, 40, 50 years, and you just want to leave something behind <laughs> to just say, you know, what did I do wrong? What did I do right? How do you avoid my mistakes and how do you repeat my successes? And they can write that kind of book too. So there's a lot of ways that we can go with it. Uh, I saw that for very early on. And yeah, it all really is just about reaching the audience and the sales at that point just take care of themselves because the value of this book is enormous. Then in terms of the process, like, you know, for, Someone to, how, how long does this take, uh, the whole process from idea to a finished book? Uh, 10 months, which is one of the reasons why people come to us, because that is enormously shorter than you trying to sit down, write something yourself, and then you're going for eight hours a day, seven days a week to start out with just trying to put a book out. Uh, and then that's not even considering what you then have to go through to get it formatted, edited, uh, find a distribution partner, so the, the ways you have to do. So it's actually very, very quick uh, from the very first day to when the book is out. And the time investment for our authors is a lot shorter if they're growing with ghostwriting, uh, because at that point, they're only doing interviews about 10 to 15, one a week. So that's 10 to 15 hours of their time to get a book out rather than the hundreds upon hundreds of hours that it would typically require. And then, um, uh, so, so there's the, the creative part of it, the writing part of it. Mm -hmm. And then, then there's the whole, the distribution, the marketing, the mechanics of all of that. Yeah. Um, so do you guys take care of that? That's what we do. Yeah. And that's the, that's why we are a hybrid publisher. When you're doing self-publishing, you're doing it all yourself. You're having to a la carte your business you, with a, with a, with a, and making a book. Every single piece you have to assemble. With us, we have it all in one house. Uh, with Simon & Schuster, we're able to get it into every bookstore, everywhere. Uh, we have printers that are already, that we work with, uh, Sheridan and LSE Communications that do all of our printing for us, so you don't have to find that. We have a format team that's internal. We have an editing team that's internal. Our ghostwriting team is all internal. Everybody that does what they do at Leaders Press outside of our partners with Simon & Schuster are all in-house. So you know who you're working with when you come to us. And then how does this, this work in the sense that, um, you know, when somebody comes to you and let's say they are, this is their very first book and, you know, you're, you're talking about this whole overwhelming process for a lot mm -hmm. of people, it's overwhelming yes. because there's so many moving parts and there's expertise involved and all that. Now, what comes with your package? You know, is, is it uh, getting on certain uh, bestseller lists or a certain number of units sold or how does that work? Yeah, the bestseller lists are the, way, are the metric that a lot of our clients are looking for because that's how you get seen. Uh, Amazon bestseller is not difficult to get if you know what you're doing. If you're a publisher and you know how to do SEO, you have an internal SEO team that is able to get eyes on the book, we can get you on the Amazon bestseller list. The USA Today Wall Street Journal lists are harder, much harder, because then it, oh, you also have to consider units sold, uh, which is a very significant number. You have to consider where those units have to be sold. It's not just in one platform. It has to be across multiple platforms. And you have to know what you're doing to be able to market a book to hit one of those lists. And it's all about how to, how to do a pre-order campaign, how to, do the, the, how to uh, have the material, that what they're looking for. So 
Yeah, we are, have an internal team that knows how to do that. And that's the metric that most of our clients are going to come to us. I want people to see my book. And then I also want some way in which my, when my book is done to get it out there and monetize it, not in royalties to actually how, what advice do you have for me to take this book that may be about my coaching business and actually get clients out of it. And that's also what we help with. We help with being able to put the material in the book that's going to get the, the attention and put it in the right places and integrate it with your media, integrate it with your own team. We'll put all of that together so that you're getting that book out and then you're making money back on it. So what are these packages like, you know, in terms of somebody going from soup to nuts, so to speak, um, how much are they looking to be out of pocket? Uh, we actually have it. It ranges all the way from as low as 5,000 to as high as 250,000. And that's really just depending on how much of the extra marketing and power do you really want behind it? Because, I mean, I say this a lot. It's a simple answer. They ask, how do you get the on the big list? And all well, you just throw money at the problem. <laughs> you know where to advertise and you pay for ad spends. You got to do that. So that's what when you get to the higher ends, you can do that. But we have lower end uh, packages as well that uh, say are in like the 5,000 range in which you're just getting a short book. If you're getting something that's 20, 30 pages that you put in your briefcase and just hand out. I mean, at that point, your investment is very low and your business cards are gone. Your book is your new business card. And I have one myself, uh, Don't Buy the Watch, that I've done that has done enormously good work for us in, in both people knowing who I am and clients coming to us through the book and being able to uh, have a lot more visibility. And what's the process for somebody to, who's looking at investigating this further? What's the process in getting in touch and going through uh, trying to learn more? Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, one is just to go straight to our website, leaderspress.com. There's an intake on there in which we just have a short quiz in which you just answer some questions about what kind of book you're looking for. And once you take that, uh, you can get into our funnel and we'll set you up with someone that's an advisor that can talk to you and see if we're a good fit for each other. Uh, another good way is we have a weekly webinar. Uh, every Thursday, uh, our CEO, Alinka, and I run a webinar. It's about an hour long in which we discuss how we do things. We go into a lot more depth about the process of, of uh, how we make a book, why it's beneficial, and then we have some time in which you can actually sit and talk with some of our advisors. And our advisors at that point can answer your questions directly, talk about your book idea, see how successful we think we can make it. And then if we have our good fit for each other, we can go forward from there. Now, in terms of this whole book publishing business, is it somehow tied to any kind of ROI for, uh, for the people that are actually investing in it? You know, how do they know that uh, their engagement with you has been successful? Well, if their engagement to us has been successful, if they unlock what they're trying to go into when they, when they come to us. I, every time I ask someone that's on a call with me about sales, one of the first questions I ask, what do you want this book to do for you? That's the very first thing that in, in the room, because what at that point I need to know is what's your end goal with the book. If you're from a business that does not do very heavy customer facing, that is uh, very internal, that is maybe a small business that just doesn't really have clients that come in the door on a regular basis, I'll be very frank with you. Uh, it's probably not a good fit if you're trying to turn this into a lead generation tool. And that's at that point, you know, we, we might give you a referral to somebody else that you might be able to go to. But if someone comes to me and they say to me, like the golden words, uh, I have good connections. I'm a coach. I just need something to, to plug in. I need you to show me people that I can get to to unlock public speaking, to unlock the things that we know are easily monetizable with a book. Then yeah, then we can help you do that. We can show you the ways in which you can take that book and turn it into something that you land one client off of in your hole. We've had several authors that have done that. It's, you know, one person that comes to them that is a unique lead that they would never have gotten unless they had the book that's one sale that's a high ticket sale can pay for it. No. So, you know, there may be people that are looking for help, get the book out of their head into an actual physical form. And there may yeah. be people who say, Hey, I can do that. I can write the book, but I need help with the distribution and marketing. There are two different sets of people. And yeah. do, you, do you address their specific needs with, with uh, the programs you have? 
Yeah, we do. Uh, we actually have a program in which there's a significantly lower cost than our ghostwriting programs in which someone has been able to get the book out of their head. They already have it on page. They know that they can do it. And at that point, when they come to us, it's just a simple vetting process. They have to submit the book. Our editorial staff looks at it, make sure that it fits with our imprint and our themes and that it's actually able to be turned into a book uh, right away. And if it is, yeah, we'll publish it. We'll go through the all, everything except for the writing process. They can still come to us for the marketing, the advice, the, the distribution, all of those things we can unlock. Um, you know, in terms of someone who, who's got an idea and then just the, the, the whole aspect of trying to crystallize those ideas into what you want to write, the chapters, the mm -hmm. process of writing, right? Yeah. Do you do anything around there? Is, is there yeah. anything people can get? That is extremely integral to, to what we do. I mean, it, we offer that as part of the package to begin with, because we have to, I mean, that's, we have to know what your ideas are and what's in your head. So that is actually the beginning of our process is outlining, mind mapping, figuring out what your expertise is in and how we can maximize that in the, in the material. Uh, a link also does masterminds and coaching that are individual separate from uh, the packages that you can contact us and she absolutely can enroll you in that. So you can get the advice uh, as well a la carte that we have our expertise for working with. I mean, at this point, we've worked with over 300 authors uh, just over the last two or three years. And you know, that, every time we do a book, we learn something new because we're learning something from the people that are coming in the door. So one other question I have is, uh... You know, the process part is one thing, you know, writing, uh, getting it written, roast written, et cetera, is another thing. How do you ensure that the person whose idea it is, whose book it is, you know, the, the written manuscript is matching up to their particular style? Yeah, that is actually one of the biggest challenges that you have when you're constructing a book uh, for someone else. It, you have to have their voice. Uh, and that's why we have internal writers that we know are professional ghost writers. They, that's what they do. So they leave their ego at the door. And part of the process that they have is number one, listening to all the strategy calls, listening to the actual conversations, uh, having as many notes and as many questions that they have answered so that they can figure out what the person's style is. So that the book hat, it reflects them. And we'll do everything we can to make sure that we maintain that voice. Uh, one of our authors, she's going to love me shouting out, Kristen Cripps, uh, with her book, Sheepreneur. Uh, she has a unique voice. You, you can't, when you're talking to her on the phone, there's only one Kristen. And that book is one of our most unique books because we captured her voice. It has all of her mannerisms, her inflections. The, you, you're not supposed to put the words LOL in a book. <laughs> but Kristen puts the words LOL in a book. So we put our publishers, our editorial side, and we're like, well, you're not supposed to do that. But okay, we're going to put LOL in there. We're going to put all the F-bombs and, and all the S-words and everything that Kristen wants to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, you, you said you've written your, your books yourself, right? Can you talk to us about those? Yeah. Um, actually, I've, I've done one. I have done uh, Don't Buy the Watch, which is my sales philosophy on selling partnerships over product. And that was done using our process. Uh, it was me putting my money where my mouth is. We wanted, I wanted a short book. I wanted something that uh, if when traveling, when going to a conference, when, when being in front of somebody, I can hand them that instead of my business card. And so that's what we put together. And I think that that's my, it, it was about my philosophy because that's what I do here at Leaders Press. Uh, our clients that come to us, our success is contingent on their success. If they don't succeed, then we don't succeed because they're going to leave a bad review. They're going to say, oh, I didn't get what I had on this. And that's, you know, good business begets good business and bad business begets an early exit. <laughs> um, so that was my philosophy in there is talking about you know, the product that you should sell should be something that benefits both of you. And if you're selling a product like that, there's a, there's a different approach to it. There's a different way that you come at it. And if you build a partnership with someone, that's far more lucrative than just selling someone a watch that they walk out the door and it begins devaluing on the minute it's out there. So it's a different kind of sales and a different philosophy. And it's the one that I like. You know, uh, let's talk a little bit about the post-publishing phase, right? Once you yes. publish a book and it's, it's out there and you're marketing it, 
what's that exercise like? How long do you need to market it before it, it reaches an inflection point where it's marketing itself? Or what happens? You know, you, you, you're done with the marketing and the sales starts sliding or how does all that work? Uh, it, it really depends. It, I hate to say the words, it's very random, but it becomes very random. Uh, nonfiction especially can either sink or swim after it's done with that initial boom, that initial marketing uh, uh, explosion that you have to get the pre-orders and build the actual initial interest in it. Uh, we have a lots of opportunities that we give to our clients to try and give them post-marketing support. And I think that's where you kid a book legs. If your book comes out and it does really well for a week and you don't do anything with it, if it's nonfiction, it's probably not going to do very well. Yeah, fiction is a different animal, but nonfiction can fall off really quick. So what you need to do with that book is find ways to keep it relevant and keep it in people's eyes. You need to do things like start actually talking to some of our partners that we work with that offer opportunities like speaking engagements, that offer opportunities like coming on to podcasts like this that are talking about books and advertising their book and talking about themselves uh, to, to get you invitations to conferences, to get you invitations to boardrooms that where, where your book can do something with you with it. But yeah, it's, you have to keep at it when you have a nonfiction book out, not every single nonfiction book that comes out is like chicken soup for the soul that, that comes out and it explodes and sells millions of copies. Some do. We have some of our authors have done extremely well, uh, post-launch just on the momentum because there's just something in the book that, that resonates with people and, and it builds. Uh, but you have to be wary that in nonfiction, there's always the chance that a book after it releases will not have the legs. And the best thing to do with that is to find ways to give it legs. So, you know, here's, here's another question, right? So that's one part of it. But then if a book is doing well and you believe that it needs to start showing up in other languages, get marketed in other languages. Mm -hmm. What does that process look like? Well, that's when we bring in our foreign rights agent, Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia works overseas, goes to book conferences, and all she does is work to sell our books into other languages. At that point, you're looking for licensing. Licensing is the easiest way and the best way to make quick money uh, that will come in and without you having to hardly do anything, it becomes basically a, a, a passive revenue that just you, you get checks. And we internally offer that as just part of our packages. It's automatically put in. So we're always pushing those books overseas. We've done very well uh, with getting those books released. Uh, I know Mr. Chung, Po Chung, a co-founder of DHL International Southeast Asian branch, had was very relevant in China and Southeast Asia, obviously. And so we marketed it very heavily there. We got it sold in India and China and uh, in licensed form. So very successful on that. Now, is that, does, is that uh, what, what's the cost metrics around that? Is that more, more costs or how does that work? No, no, that's actually included completely in our package. There's never any extra that's put in there. And we always have our catalog of our books that we put together that we're working with foreign rights to, to get them translated into languages. The other advantage is our partnership with Simon & Schuster. Simon & Schuster, we pay for them internally. It's not something that anybody has to actually pay for. They don't do uh, foreign right sales in other languages, but they do do overseas sales. So our books are always in their catalog for the buyers overseas. And that ends up getting you into bookstores and getting sold in other countries that otherwise you wouldn't have the reach. You definitely wouldn't have the reach if you went self-publishing with that. Okay. And then... Uh... You know, in terms of just to understand numbers, when we talk about all these best-selling lists, can you kind of give a feel for what kind of volume sales are we talking about in mm -hmm. order to hit certain best-selling lists? Yeah. For the major lists, for USA Today and Wall Street Journal, it's actually a, a very solid metric of 6,000 copies in a week. And that, that right there is what gets you on those lists. That, that's what unlocks the entry onto the list. They're not going to look at you... Huh? Just one week? Uh, yeah, you have to do six thousand copies. In, you have to do six thousand copies in the week of release, or or in a week after that. That's how they're actually going to look at you and see where you're going to fit on the list. Now, Amazon's a different animal. Amazon, the way that Amazon works, there are many many, many subcategories. You could sell ten copies and be a bestseller on Amazon in certain categories, but people probably aren't going to search. But when you're a company like us, what you can do is you can find all the keywords that are going to work 
and release in a lot of smaller categories, which means as you sell in those categories and become bestsellers, you will get noticed in the higher categories. Uh, our, one of our most successful Amazon books was Cy Huda's Next Level Cybersecurity. And Cy was number one in network security for a year and a half. And that's a huge category. But we started with looking at smaller categories where you only needed to sell 100, 200 copies just to be seen and noticed in those. And that's how he percolated up to the top and then began to sell the thousands of copies that was required to get noticed in network security. What, what about the Wall Street Journal best-selling? It's the same metrics as USA Today. They are both looking, yeah, they both look at 6,000 copies in that week and it has to be across multiple platforms. So it can't just be on Amazon. You can sell 100,000 copies on Amazon, you'll not hit one of those lists if, unless you sell them in other venues as well. That's physical bookstores, iBooks, uh, any other place that is a recognized major retailer of books. Now, do you actually get into working with your writers in some kind of a partnership deals in terms of books where you are actually keeping a part of whatever the proceeds from the sales or stuff like that? We take 10% of royalties on every book that we do. So 90% goes to the author. We give the author 100% rights, which is one of the reasons why it's very attractive for people in business to look at us. Because traditional publishers will take much higher percentages of revenue and traditional publishers will many times take rights. They will take a percentage of rights. If you're trying to, like, let's say if Tom Fagro, he was one of our writers uh, that did Next Level Selling, his, his proprietary system, PAM, that he writes about in Next Level Selling, sales system, if he had taken that to a traditional publisher and a traditional publisher had been interested in it, they would have wanted rights partially to his proprietary system. With us, he retained 100% rights, copyrights, everything he wants with that. So he could take Pam and do whatever he wants with it, and he has. Um, now, the reason we take 10% royalties is merely that's how we continue to pay for the printing. That's how we continue to pay for our distribution deals, all of that. So royalties then go 90% split to the author. There's then percentages that get taken out by Amazon, percentages that get taken out by Simon & Schuster. Royalties aren't where you make money in nonfiction. And that's also something that many people have to understand when they, when they decide to write a nonfiction book. If you're going to make money on these, you're going to make money on avenues that aren't necessarily royalties. Royalties are successful in fiction books. That's where they make their money. Okay. And uh, on the flip side, you know, some of the services that you provide in terms of ghostwriting services, et cetera, editing services and all that, I'm sure you're in the market actually looking for talent in terms of people that are good writers, how does that work? So where are you looking for people that you work with? Uh, we have used various different places like Upworks. We've used a lot of ghostwriting or uh, a lot of ghostwriting videos. We've used the freelance model, but what we do, unlike some others, is we try to find people that we can then hire and stay in-house. So many of our authors started with their own businesses. They're actually just individual authors, sell authors selling themselves. Um, but they would sometimes only land one or two clients a year, if that. So they come to us and they're working with us so that they can work an eight hour day, 40 hour a week job and actually be able to have us send them the clients that otherwise they would have to find. So it's usually starting with looking at who's out there that's trying to sell their business as a freelancer, uh, which there's thousands. And then it's the needle in the haystack, find somebody that is someone that we can work with in perpetuity uh, as long as they want to continue to work with us that we can hire internally that has the skills that we're looking for and uh, we don't have to hire very often which is part of the <laughs> advantage of that because we have our in-house team and it's only when one of our team decides to go that we have to look again awesome well this has been great thank you so much for kind of walking us through this entire process i know a lot of uh, wannabe writers have these questions uh, both on the getting a book published side, as well as looking at gigs where they can actually write or edit and things like those. Yeah, absolutely. So this has been very helpful. And for people that want to reach you or get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, uh, our website, leaderspress.com. Uh, everything is there. All my information is there. If you want to book a time to have a call with myself or our CDO, John, uh, our calendar links are on there. And if you want to have a look at our webinar, our weekly webinar, 
webinar. There's a link on our website to uh, opt in for that. And we do it every single Thursday at noon Eastern time, U.S. And if you want to show up, uh, you can have an opportunity to hear Link and I talk about what we do in much more detail and, and speak to one of our advisors. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today. Andrew, thank you for sharing what you do. Uh, very inspirational stuff. And I hope uh, some of the listeners uh, go ahead and check it out. You know, uh, today it's about uh, writing and being the expert in your field, you know, in order to get that kind of dominance within that field. And absolutely, this has been very helpful. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much.